Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible. For May 11th, 2024, here we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life. Our goal is to hear all of the Bible by the end of December 2024, to increase our faith, to please the Heavenly Father, to walk in the abundant life that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus redeemed for us by His blood, death, and resurrection on the cross at Calvary, and to do the works of the greater works that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus of Nazareth said we would do in the book of John chapter 14 verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And John 10, 10 to 11, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And we know from Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And Hebrews 11.6 lets us know, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And Romans 10.17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 2 Corinthians 5.7 in the Amplified, if we, For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 reads, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. For brethren, we are our brother's keepers. And, for, and John chapter 4 verse 23 to 24, But the hour is coming and now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And John 14, beginning at verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and will be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And John 14, verse 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And the book of John, chapter 16, verse 13, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, and therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Verse 23, in that day you will not need to ask me about anything. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name as my representative, he will give you. Until now you have not asked the Father for anything in my name, but now ask and keep on asking and you will receive, so that your joy may be full and complete. And John chapter 6 verse 63, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit. And they are life. And John 15, 3, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Brethren, as we receive this word, we are being cleaned. We are being healed. For Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And so, John chapter 15, verse 7 through 8, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And Proverbs 11.30 lets us know that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. So the words of life that we shall receive today, May 11th, are Psalm 23, 
25. The Old Testament reading will begin today with the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 36. And the New Testament reading will begin today with the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 1 through 31. The psalm and the prayer focus, Psalm 27, will be read from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. The Old Testament reading and the New Testament readings will come from the Amplified Version of the Bible, copyright 1954, 1958, 1962, 1965, 1987, by the Lockman Foundation, used by permission, all rights reserved. The Bible we are you are seeing before you is a parallel Bible having the New King James Version on the left and the Amplified Version of the Bible on the right hand side of the pages. They are the exact same scriptures in different versions, translations of the Bible. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for all too. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and that you are receiving the grace to walk in those promises. I would ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you share Jesus for all too with another, that you would subscribe, and that you would give it the hand symbol representing that you like the recording. The gloves, this Jesus for All Two is for the magnification, the uplifting of the Word. Who is God Himself? Amen. And that is the only thing that is on view. The gloves are the colors as designated by the Word of God to be used in the building of the tabernacle in Amen, as given unto Moses. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And now, Psalm 25. And the theme of Psalm 25 is a prayer for defense, guidance, and pardon. As we trust in God, he grants these same requests for us. And this is a psalm of David, and it reads, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. For show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from of old. Verse 7. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your mercy, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in the way. Verse 9. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn yourself to me and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Look on my affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not. Verse 20. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed. For I put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Verse 22 and last. Redeem Israel, O God, out 
of all their troubles. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ or every of us, the hearers. And now the Old Testament reading, beginning today with the book of 1 Samuel. Praise the Lord. See in the name of Jesus Christ how we are progressing and how the year is moving steadily onward. And by way of introduction, the book of 1 Samuel. In the Hebrew text, I and 1st and 2nd Samuel constituted one book, identified by the name Samuel. It was divided into two parts in the Septuagint, the Greek Old Testament, and designated as the 1st and 2nd books of kingdoms. Although the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel have traditionally been ascribed to Samuel, he could hardly have been the author since his death is recorded in 1st Samuel verse 25. Whoever wrote these books may have used such sources as the book of Jaser, which is mentioned in 2 Samuel verse 18, and writings by Samuel, Nathan, and Gad, which are noted in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 verse 29, as sources for the acts of King David. The book of 1 Samuel marks the transition of rule over Israel from judgeship to monarchy, beginning with the background and birth of Samuel. The career of Samuel, whose influence as a prophet, priest, and judge was extensive throughout the entire nation from Dan to Bathsheba, includes the anointing of both Saul and David. And now the book of first book of Samuel, chapter 1, and it reads, There was a certain man of Ramath Zophim, of the hill country of Ephraim, named Elkanai, son of Joham, the son of Elu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoph, an Ephraimite. He had two wives, one named Hannah and the other named Peniah. Peniah had children, but Hannah had none. This man went from his city year by year to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where Hopni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were the Lord's priests. When the day came that Elkanah sacrificed, he would give to Peniah his wife and all her sons and daughters portions of the sacrificial meat. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had given her no children. This embarrassed and grieved Hannah, and her rival provoked her greatly to vex her, because the Lord had left her childless. 7. So it was year after year, whenever Hannah went up to the Lord's house, Peniah provoked her, so she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you cry, and why do you not eat, and why are you grieving? Am I not more to you than ten sons? So Hannah rose after they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, after they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on his seat beside a post of the temple tent of the Lord. And Hannah was in the distress of soul, praying to the Lord and weeping bitterly. She vowed, saying, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your handmaid, and earnestly remember and not forget your handmaid, but will give me a son, I will give him to the Lord all his life. No razor shall touch his head. 12. And as she continued praying before the Lord, Eli noticed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. So Eli thought she was drunk. Eli said to her, How long will you be intoxicated? Put wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my lord. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I am pouring out my soul before the Lord. Reference Genesis 19.34 Regard not your handmaid as a wicked woman, for out of my great complaint and bitter provocation I have been speaking. Then Eli said, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. Verse 17 Then Eli said, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. Hannah said, Let your handmaid find grace in your sight. So she went her way and ate. Her continence no longer sad. The family rose early the next morning, worshipped before the Lord, and returned to their home in Ramah. Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. 
Hannah became pregnant and in due time bore a son and named him Samuel, which means heard of God, because she said, I have asked him of the Lord. And Elkanah and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and pay his vow. But Hannah did not go, for she said to her husband, I will not go until the child is weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there as long as he lives. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So Hannah remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him with her with a three-year-old bull, an epa of flour, and a skin bottle of wine to pour over the burnt offering for a sweet odor, and brought them to the Lord's house in Shiloh. The child was growing. Then they slew the bull and brought the child to Eli. Hannah said, O oh my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted my petition made to him. Therefore I have given him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. And they worship the Lord there. Chapter 2 Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts and triumphs in the Lord. My horn, my strength is lifted up in the Lord. My mouth is, so, is no longer silent, for it opened wide over my enemies, because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance go forth from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowls of the mighty are broken, and those who stumble are girded with strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry have ceased to be hunger. Ceased to hunger. The barren has borne seven. But she who has many children languishes and is forlorn. The Lord slays and makes alive. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he lifts up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the nearby from the ash heap to make them sit with nobles and inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. Verse 9. He will guard the feet of his godly ones, but the wicked shall be silenced and perish in darkness, for by strength no man shall prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces, against them will he thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge all peoples to the ends of the earth, and he will give strength to his king, and exalt the power of his anointed. Anointed is Christ. Reference Luke 1, 46, verse 11. Elkanah and his wife Hannah returned to Ramah to his house, but the child ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. The sons of Eli were base and worthless. They did not know or regard the Lord. And the custom of the priest with the people was this. When any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was boiling with a fish hook of three prongs in his hand, and he thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fish hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh with all the Israelites who came there. Also, before they burned the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man who sacrificed, Give me the priest's meat to roast, for he will not accept boiled meat from you, but raw. And if the man said to him, Let them burn the fat first, and then you may take as much as you want, the priest's servant would say, No, give it to me now, or I will take it by force. 17. So the sin of the two young men was very great before the Lord, for they despised the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, a child girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little robe and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. 20. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord give you children by this woman for the gift she asked for and give to the Lord 
and gave to the Lord. Then they would go to their own home. 31. And the Lord visited Hannah, so that she bore three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now Eli was very old, and he heard all that his sons did to all Israel, and how they lay with women who served at the door of the tent of meeting. And he said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, it is no good report which I hear, the Lord's people spreading abroad. If one wrongs another, God will mediate for him. But if a man wrongs the Lord, who shall intercede for him? Yet they did not listen to their father, for it was the Lord's will to slay them. Now the boy Samuel grew and was in favor both with the Lord and with men. A man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus has the Lord said, I plainly revealed myself to the house of your father, forerun, forefather Aaron, when they were in Egypt in bondage to Pharaoh's house. Moreover, I selected him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer on my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me. And I gave from then on to the house of your father, for, forefather, all the offerings of the Israelites made by fire. Verse 29, why then do you kick, trample upon, treat with contempt my sacrifice and my offerings, which I commanded and honor your sons above me? by fattening yourselves upon the choicest part of every offering of my people Israel. 30. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I will promise that your house and that of your father, forefather Aaron, shall go in and out forever before me forever. But now, the Lord says, be it far from me. For those who honor me I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the time is coming when I will cut off your strength and the strength of your own father's house, that there shall not be an old man in your house, and you shall behold the distress of my house, even in all the posterity which God will give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in your house forever. Yet I will not cut off from my altar every man of yours, some shall survive to weep and mourn over the father's ruin. But all the increase of your house shall die in their best years. Reference 1 Samuel 22, verse 17 through 20. And what befalls your two sons, Hopni and Phinehas, shall be a sign to you. In one day they both shall die. Fulfilled in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 17 through 18. And verse 35. And I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, who shall do according to what is in my heart and mind, and I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before my anointed anointed forever. First Samuel chapter two verse ten. Verse thirty six and last. Everyone who is left in your house shall come crouch crouching to him, for a piece of silver and a bit of bread, and say, Put me, I pray you, into a priest's office, so I may have a piece of bread and in the name of Jesus Christ this word is already blessed as I pray as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ are every of us the hearers now the New Testament reading first Corinthians and by way of introduction this letter was written by Paul to the church in Corinth probably around A.D. 55, during Paul's extended ministry in Ephesus. Paul sent this letter in response to information received from several sources concerning the conditions existing in the church at Corinth, and in response to a letter from the Corinthian church asking for counsel. The bearer of this epistle may have been Timothy, chapter 16, verse 10, or one of the three men mentioned in chapter 16, verse 17. Located on the Mediterranean Sea, the city of Corinth enjoyed a trade monopoly that made it a wealthy trading center. In Paul's day, it was a Roman colony, attracting a cosmopolitan population of Romans, Greeks, and Jews from various points of the Mediterranean world. This changing population created moral conditions that were regarded as inferior, 
even by pagan standards. In a setting like this, it is no wonder that the Corinthian church was plagued with numerous problems. Paul came to Corinth from Athens on his second missionary journey, probably in the fall of AD 50, and remained there a year and a half, Acts 18.11. It was during this period that he established this church. Leaving Corinth, probably in the spring of AD 52, Paul was accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila to Ephesus. From here, Paul went to Palestine, as referenced in the book of Acts chapter 18, verse 22, may have visited Jerusalem and then made his final visit to Antioch in Syria. In all likelihood, he went back in, back in Ephesus in the fall of A.D. 53, near the end of his two-year ministry in Ephesus. Paul wrote the epistle to Corinth, known as 1 Corinthians. Paul discusses a wide variety of subjects in this timely letter, party strife, immorality, lawsuits, marriage, idolatry, pagan customs, the Lord's Supper, Paul's ministry, gifts of the Spirit, the resurrection, church finance, and numerous other subjects. The phrase now concerning or now about at various points in this letter introduces a new subject. And that is referenced in chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 12 and chapter 16. Paul also uses an extensive range of literary devices. These reflect a conversational approach and may offer some insight into the methods of entreaty, exposition, logic, and scolding he may have used had he been present in person. Throughout this appeal, Paul brings to bear the implications of the gospel for the everyday experiences of life in a pagan society. And now, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and it reads, Paul, summoned by the will and purpose of God to be an apostle, a special messenger of Christ Jesus and our brothers Sosthenes, to the church or assembly of God, which is in Corinth. Those consecrated and purified and made holy in Christ Jesus, who are selected and called to be saints, or God's people together with all those who in any place call upon and give honor to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace, favor, and spiritual blessing be to you, and heart peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God at all times for you because of the grace, the favor, and spiritual blessings of God, which was bestowed on you in Christ Jesus. Five, so that in him in every respect you were enriched in full power and readiness of speech to speak of your faith and complete knowledge and illumination to give you full insight into its meaning. In this way, our witnessing concerning Christ the Messiah was so confirmed and established and made sure in you. Verse 7, that you are not consciously falling behind or lacking in any special spiritual endowment or Christian grace, the reception of which is due to the power of divine grace operating in your souls by the Holy Spirit. While you wait and watch, constantly living in hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and his being made visible to all. And he will establish you to the end, keep you steadfast, give you strength and guarantee your vindication. He will be your warrant against all accusation or indictment, so that you will be guiltless and irreproachable in that day, in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Verse 9. God is faithful, reliable, trustworthy, and therefore ever true to his promise, and he can be depended on. By him you were called into companionship and participation with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. But I urge and entreat you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in perfect harmony and full agreement in what you say, and that there be no dissension or factions or divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in your common understanding and in your opinions and judgments. For it has been made clear to me my brethren, by the, those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions and wrangling and factions among you. Verse 12. What I mean is this, that each one of you either says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, Peter, 
or I belong to Christ. Is Christ the Messiah divided into parts? Was Paul crucified on behalf of you, or were you baptized into the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gauss, lest anyone should say that I baptized in my own name. Verse 16, yes, I did baptize the household of Stephanus also. More than these, I do not remember that I baptized anyone. For Christ the Messiah sent me out not to baptize, but to evangelize by preaching the glad tidings, the gospel, and that not with verbal eloquence, lest the cross of Christ should be deprived of force and emptied of its power and rendered vain, useless, void of strength, void of value, and of no effect. For the story and message of the cross is sheer absurdity and folly to those who are perishing and on their way to perdition. But to us who are being saved, it is the manifestation of the power of God. For it is written, I will baffle the, and render useless and destroy the learning of the learned and the philosophy of the philosophers and the cleverness of the clever and the discernment of the discerning. I will frustrate and nullify them and bring them to nothing. Therefore, this is the wise man, the philosopher. Where is the scribe, the scholar? Where is the investigator, the logician, the debater of this present time and age? Has not God shown us the nonsense and the folly of this world's wisdom? Verse 21. For when the world with all its earthly wisdom failed to perceive and recognize and know God by means of its own philosophy, God in his wisdom was pleased through the foolishness of preaching salvation procured by Christ and to be had through him to save those who believed, who clung to and trusted in and relied on him. For while Jews demandingly asked for signs and miracles and Greeks pursued philosophy and wisdom, we preach Christ the Messiah crucified, preaching which to the Jew is scandal and an offense stumbling block that springs a snare or trap, and to the Gentiles it is absurd and utterly unphilosophical nonsense. But to those who are called, whether Jew or Greek, Gentile, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This is because the foolish things that are its source in, in God is wiser than men, and the weak thing that springs from God is stronger than men. 26. For simply consider your own call, brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to the human estimates and standards, not many influential and powerful, not many of high and noble birth. No, for God selected deliberately chose what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. And God also selected deliberately chose what in the world is low born and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing, that he might dispose and bring to nothing the things that are, so that no mortal man should have pretense or for glorifying and boast in the presence of God. But it is from him that you have your life in Christ Jesus whom God made our wisdom from God, reserved to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation previously hidden, manifesting itself as our righteousness, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God, and our consecration making us pure and holy, and our redemption providing our ransom from eternal penalty for sin. So then, as it is written, let him who boasts, verse 31 in us, so then as it is written, let him who boasts and proudly rejoices and glories, boast and proudly rejoice and glory in the Lord. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ are every of us, the hearers. Our prayer focus, brethren, is from the book of Psalm, chapter 27. However, we not, will not be hearing it in our hearing today. You may read it on your own or listen to it either in yesterday 
or the day before's reading of the word. But let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, you are my light and my salvation, the strength of my life. In Jesus' name, I will not walk in fear, but in power, love, and a sound mind. For by you, my God, my helper, I know every of my enemies shall stumble and fall. O Lord, in Jesus' name, give me the grace to dwell in your house all the days of my life, and behold your beauty. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, hide me in the secret place of your tabernacle, set me on high. Upon you, my rock, lift my head above all my enemies. O Lord, I sing praises to you. Hear, O Lord, when I cry to you. Have mercy on me for all I entered into that did not follow your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have prayed. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am seeking your face. Do not hide from me in anger, God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, thank you for taking care of me and teaching me your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, lead me, O Lord, in a smooth path. And do not deliver me into the hands of my adversaries or the false witnesses who rise against me, those who breathe out violence. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I believe I will see your goodness in the land of the living. I wait for you. I trust in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am asking that you grant unto me good courage. Strengthen my heart, Father, that I lose not faith, that I look to you in all things with great confidence and faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that as I pray you hear as I pray you answer already in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have prayed and father we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for Psalm 107 verse 20 he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions we thank you O Lord in the name of Jesus Christ that as we have received this word today we have been healed And we have been delivered in Jesus' name from every destructive thing in our lives. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.